bring in uh, Mick Aussie. We've talked about Mick. Mick, you'd be good at this. You've got a hard head. What's going on, Mick? Greg Hardy, what a flog he is. Anyway, Gabe, I must congrat I must congratulate you. I went to a great Super Bowl party at the Elks, and then I came back and I watched your video with all your props. Even though I had a few beers, I'm going, holy moly, Gabe's gone like 16 and 4 on props. So congratulations. But I made a quick adjustment to my calculation. And if I gave Andy Reid one extra point, and if I also bought in special teams, so item O is the Aaron Sipos special teams, two points for the Chiefs, because that Aussie punter totally screwed up. He went defensive. He went for the end over end punt conservative. Did not get the mm. distance. Terrible low, low, low drive punt. Blaming the Aussie. He was as much to blame, sadly, for that <laughs> Eagles loss. Eagles blew it more than your Chiefs won it. Congratulations, though. You've got to get lucky. Can't trust an Australian punter, Mick. Come on. Everyone knows that. Nah, everybody knows that. That's right. So you guys are well, taking the punt to your kick, taking a kicking game over. You take you you're taking a kicking world uh, over. Um, no, listen, thank you. Yeah, we were you know the game went the way that we thought uh, it would actually. We said it would be a three point win. We said Bucker would kick the late field goal late. It everything kind of played out the way that it did. I told a story earlier about how they nearly called a timeout actually, and then everybody would have ran to play to score the touchdown uh, late uh, for them. Fun Super Bowl, but the real question is, uh, Mick, who's going to win the XFL championship? What does your sheet say? Oh, ha. I actually listened to a great podcast, the Mark Cast today, and Jamie Elizondo, the former Elks coach, is the OC for Heinz Ward's team, San Antonio, and I have to have them as my second team. Dave, block your ears. There's only two Steeler players I've ever liked in my whole life. Heinz Ward and your mate Mitch Berger, who I met in Vancouver and at the Pro Bowl. But my favorite team, I'm going to stick with the Houston Roughnecks. P.J. Walker used to be their quarterback, followed him in wow. our time at Houston. So I'm going to have the Houston Roughnecks as my favorite XFL team again. Well, that, Dave, Mick's coming at us with offensive coordinators. Uh, see, Mick's, Mick's ready. <laughs> I I didn't see that one coming. I got to be perfectly honest. I'm impressed with the sheet. Like, did you if you would have known if you looked at him that he knows who the offensive coordinator of the the San Antonio Brahmas are? I would have bet the no. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I would have bet the no for everything. I would be broke right. See, he's. I, you know what? Though, I'm not liking this. He was he wasn't a very good coach. And uh, 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 Heinz Ward too, huh? Heinz Ward's the coach. I mean, Heinz must be bored. Like, right? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I loved Heinz Ward. Heinz Ward, he chose to retire rather than go to Baltimore and play. Baltimore offered him a contract, and he said, I can't go to Baltimore. I'm a stealer. I can never put that Ravens uniform on. I'm not getting enough in a paycheck. I'll retire. So I respect Heinz. I'm, I'm impressed that you, uh, you're a fan of Heinz, uh, Mick. But, I, again, I'm impressed with the sheet more and more as the season went on. I didn't know what was on that sheet and exactly how you came up with those numbers, but this is this is good information. You're the only guy that's even mentioned Houston in uh, in the, the look ahead here for the XFL. There's another well, um, another Pittsburgh Steeler. Actually, he's a head coach too. Rod Woodson. Rod Woodson is actually the coach of the Vegas Vipers, Dave. Oh boy. Mm. I'm going to have to try to run into Rod, see what he's doing. I wonder where they're practicing. I go over to the practices. I like that. All right. That. So as far as, as far as his coaching experience, Rod, uh, all right. He coached uh, high school football. Then he coached, uh, he was the cornerbacks coach of the Raiders. Mm -hmm. uh, following 2017, once he was promoted to cornerback coach. All right, so That's Woodson it. hasn't coached in football since 2017. He's never been a head coach. We might be in trouble. I want to. I, I want to pick on those teams, Dave. Like, you, dude, he's right. playing against Bob Stoops tomorrow. Bob Stoops going to be ready. Bob Stoops like no has question. put game plans together week ones and like you know what I mean. Like yeah. he knows yeah. like how to. Come on. 
Mick, is this on the sheets? Like, I mean, like, what would you make the adjustment for Woodson versus Stoops? I'd have to give Stoops. Yeah, like Bob Stoops, the great Bob Stoops. Right? No, I think it's more. <laughs> Coaching advantage. Four and a half, 4.5. Well, he, he, he sure was a very good footballer, Rod Woodson. But the coach of the uh, Houston team, another Bronco connection, Wade Phillips, uh, defensive coordinator of our Super Bowl team, Ooh. 50, I reckon. And also another Broncos connection. I will not be going for the Orlando Guardians because that Paxton Lynch is quarterback. He couldn't even make the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, so he'll probably get injured and cry on the sidelines. So I won't be supporting the Orlando team. He's terrible. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I like to run next tomorrow. Odds in the whole league, so you're on to something. Who Orlando? Yeah, they know it. Yeah, they're the worst. They're the worst odds in the whole in the whole league. I so, don't know. If Paxton yeah. Lynch is going to be the starting quarterback. It's either him or DeAndre Francois, the kid from FSU. But and I think it probably will be Lynch. They already had Francois. And they brought Lynch in, I guess. So. Lynch played it for the Michigan Panthers, and it didn't go well. Right, so oh, yeah. they're playing against the Houston, Houston Roughnecks tomorrow in Houston. Quarterback of the Houston Roughnecks is uh, Cole McDonald, the quarterback from Hawaii. If you remember the Lay kid, it. he had long hair, tattoos Lay and it. stuff, big kid. Lay it. I like it. I like Houston I like tomorrow. It. Houston yeah. over Orlando Moneyline. Yeah. It's a Texas two-step. Yeah. Arlington and Houston. In-game live all access continues. I am Renzi, Dave Sherapan in the house, Mick Aussie, uh, with us. So as far as the quarterbacks are concerned in the uh, in the XFL, Kyle Sloter is the quarterback of Arlington. Kyle Sloter, he was the quarterback. He was in the USFL. Uh, he played extremely well in the USFL. He was on the New Orleans uh, Breakers. He was named all USFL, played for the Minnesota Vikings uh, as well. Um, quarterback for the D.C. Defenders, Jordan Tamu. Remember Jordan Tamu? He um, he was also, what was he? And he was in the USFL with Tampa. And I think he was with, um, I think he was in the XFL before, actually, with St. Louis. But nevertheless, Jordan Tamu was a good quarterback. He's he's, he's good. He's, he's pretty good. Um, he's on the D.C. defenders, although I don't think they're going to be great the defenders. We mentioned Cole McDonald as the quarterback of the Houston Roughnecks, uh, former Hawaii uh, Warrior. DeAndre Francois and Paxton Lynch, quarterback in Orlando. Everybody expects Orlando to struggle. San Antonio Brahmas, their quarterback, former Notre Dame Fighting Irish and Wisconsin Badger. Jack Cohn is uh, the quarterback in San Antonio. Heinz Ward, of course, is the coach. Mick Ossie brought up the Wade Phillips, the coach in Houston. The great Bob Stoops is the coach of the, um, the Arlington Renegades. Head coach Jim Haslett of the Seattle Sea Dragons. And uh, their offensive coordinator, Mick, is our boy, June Jones, uh, oh. former Hamilton Tiger Cat head coach, June Jones, Hawaii Warrior head coach, and uh, SMU Mustang head coach, Atlanta Falcon head coach. June Jones is the OC there. I tell you what, there's a quality, they've got some quality coaches uh, in this league. Quarterback of the Seattle Sea Dragons, Ben DiNucci. And everybody thinks, oh, Ben DiNucci's going to blow and stuff, but just because the kid wasn't good in the National Football League walking in off the street doesn't mean he won't light up the XFL. I'm expi expecting big things from Ben DiNucci and the Seattle Sea Dragons. Mick Ossie is uh, preparing to go uh, to the land down under. A lot of uh, negotiations had to be done, Dave, with the government of Australia <laughs> to let him back into the country. Um <laughs> Much like Novak Djokovic, a lot of lot of paperwork, a lot of like you know, a lot of red tape. Mick has powerful <laughs> people, uh, powerful people. The question: Are you going to be allowed to leave, uh, Mick? When you get, you know what I mean? You haven't oh been home boy. in a little while. Are you are you allowed to leave once you oh get to Australia? Are you going to get detained? I, I have the Australian passport still. I'm landed status here. I haven't got dual citizenship. No real need to, right? You just renew it every five years. So yes. I hope I'm allowed back in, not like Bart Simpson caused all that trouble, but looking forward to it, and I will be in Melbourne for the first so two does the games water, of AFL. Does the water go the other way, like in the toilet, when you flush the toilet, like Bart Simpson wondered? 
There is lots of things. The light switches are opposite, driving on the opposite side of the road, of course. So what do you mean the light switch things. is opposite? What do you mean? The lights are up and down? You turn it up instead of <laughs> What do you mean? Like what, like, what do you mean it's opposite? It's opposite. It's pretty basic, isn't it? Up is opposite. So up is off, down is on? Whatever is opposite, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's tons of things. And I tell you what, Gabe, I'll have a little go at you. When Paul Bovey's saying he's eating kangaroo and you said it's a family show, kangaroo is eaten in pubs and restaurants. They breed kangaroos now for food and a lot died because of the drought. So you've got to get with it, mate. Is there no, not Dave agrees. We don't want to hear things? about people eating kangaroos. I, 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 I've never heard this before, and now I'm actually a little bit alarmed. I didn't even know you ate kangaroos. I felt the same way. I was like, let's just move on from eating the kangaroos, all right? Like, I like the I like kangaroos. Like, I, I, I just feel bad now. <laughs> I don't feel bad. I had no idea. I, 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 I ate the kangaroo, the kangaroo burger just... about 35 years ago up in Darwin, up the top, just below there. And then probably 10 years ago, they're now growing farms where they grow kangaroos. And then you can get it in quite a few restaurants and... Paul Vovey put a great picture of his kangaroo steak meal. It was awesome. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah Paul, Paul was complaining that it cost him. He said he spent a lot of money, $24 on it. I was like, yeah, high roller. Oh, wow. Jeez, right. I mean, geez. That's what Arby's okay. cost. Sonic cost 24 yeah. bucks now. I think. Uh, I so, the Mick. Extra, extra value meal, yeah. Uh, you're going to go. So, you're going to Australia. So, this is cool. We're going to be betting on the game. So you're going to Australia, and you're going to be at the opening match of the 2023 AFL season. Absolutely. It'll be Thursday night, Australian time, MCG. There will be a crowd, 90,000 probably, Carlton, Richmond. They have that game at the start every year. And then the Friday night will go as well. The reigning premiers, Geelong Cats versus Collywobble Magpie. So that will be a massive crowd again, probably 90,000. And that will wow. be... Uh, Saturday morning, their time will be this time now. So I should be able to do the show at the same time. What's that? Saturday morning, Australian March time. 18th or 17th or whatever? Yeah. What is that? March yep. 16th, it's his opening night. I'm oh, it is? Hey, okay, yeah. Right now. Mick, there's on, on, on Fandle here, it says minor That's March Madness premiership. Weekend, actually. Yeah, that's going to be chaos. Then it says top four. Then it says AFL to make the top eight. And then it says to make the grand final. Then it says to win the flag. What in the world is all these bets, Mick? I don't, <laughs> right. I don't even know what, what the top eight, going top on. Top eight, Dave, is to make the playoffs. I'll simplify okay. that one. Top eight, okay. make the playoffs. Grand yeah. final is their Super Bowl. That's the championship. Okay. And then the flag, is that what they call like to win it all? Yep. That's, that's, yep. Okay. The premiership okay. or the flag. Yep. So and the, it's it's Geelong. How do you say that? Geelong. <laughs> that's right. My Geelong. used to say that. Geelong. Geelong that's cats. Right, Dave. Geelong. Okay. Geelong. They're the favorite, and then yep. everyone else is either five and a half or six to one. Between who do you like, Mick? Melbourne, Brisbane. Who, who do you like? Yeah, the Cats won it last year. They're getting old, but we say that all the time. They were quite the best team. They won it easily in the end over the Swans. Cats are favoured are about plus 450. Demons, who won it a couple of years before, they're at plus 600. They're a big chance as well. Tigers are looking good. Lions, Swans, yeah. Port Adelaide Power might make the eight. They had a rough year last year. But the Gold Coast Suns at plus 300 to make the eight, that might be a bit of a bet because they're a young team on the up as well. I remember a day when the West Coast Eagles used to be a power and used to win championships. Now they're a laughing stock right at the bottom with the Hawthorne Hawks and the North Melbourne uh, Kangaroos. But uh, Mix Adelaide Crows are right there at 66 to one. Yep. The Demons always choke. <laughs> That's Clam Chowder's team. They yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I guess you're right. It's a couple years. They do a bit, though. They do a bit. You're right. Yeah, they always have a really they good. Yeah, they're good in the regular season. You know what I mean? They're a regular season team, but they had they did win that time. What about Dubsy Sydney Swans? 
Hard to trust a yeah. team called the Swans. Yeah. Soft. Good. <laughs> swans are not soft. They're actually vicious animals. Anyway, Swans, yeah, they <laughs> made it last year. They're a good young team, though. They're a big chance. They're swans are vicious? Crazy. I guess all these things are vicious. But you're saying Swan, what, you eat them too, I guess, huh? What about Swans? <laughs> No, don't eat them, mate. Come on, them. No, you can't eat a swan. <laughs> They're I, beautiful I animals. Eat a kangaroo. I, I don't know. <laughs> swan would taste like chicken, I would think. I, how would I know? I don't know. Never even occurred to me to try. <clears throat> One thing I want to comment on is this celebrity game. What is this? A two-hour marathon? Like, dear God, man, play a damn quarter and get off the court. <laughs> like, really? Game. Like, oh my, it doesn't end. Just, Three two penguins. The game's going over. I got under six and that a half. Game. I think I'm dead. I'm done. Okay, Mick. No sh So uh before we get you out of here, how was the Elks uh Great Cup uh Super Bowl party? Yeah, it was more of the River Creek function with Elks players there and a legend Brian Hall radio guy met him. But yeah, it was a good party. Beer was cheap, beautiful big screens, and uh yeah, good night, great game. Great game, but like I said, I think the Eagles blew it more than your Chiefs won it. But hey, whatever. And I tell you, what, Andy Reid, Andy Reid did a magnificent job of adjusting at halftime the coaching. You've got to pay it to Andy Reid. Fantastic, Mick Aussie. Great job, uh, Mick. We'll catch up with you next week. Right. Thanks, Mick. And I won't be. I won't be watching the slam dunk tomorrow night. Last year was terrible. Waste of an hour. I won't be doing that. That was brutal. See you later, guys. Hold on, hold on Mick. How long are you in Australia Whoa. for? Oh. Oh. Just just under three weeks. Right, hold on. Let me check something here. What's the, uh, is the Formula One race there? When you're there? Oh, oh I don't well. know. It's in Melbourne. It's coming up. No, I won't be. It's no, oh, I'm not boy. sure. No, April, it's uh, da, 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 no. da, da. April 2nd. Right. You Doing just miss it. Yeah. Yeah, it's March 31st, April 2nd. Right. You going to be there for that? No, nah, I'll be back here. Be back here, and when I get back here, the uh, CFL Combine will be in Edmonton, so I'll go to that the day after I get back. Like you, Gabe, nonstop football. Football all year round for me now. With the XFL. CF, <laughs> CFL Combine. That's some hardcore Edmonton, stuff. Never stops. <laughs> wow. You ever been to the, the, the Melbourne Grand Prix racetrack there? No, but I did in Adelaide because Adelaide had it for about seven years before the Premier of Victoria stole it from us, paid Eccleston all those millions of dollars and stole it. So I'm not happy about that. Bastard. Yep. Used to be in Adelaide, huh? And Melbourne came yep. in and st absolutely. Drop the I saw Drop Elaine the Frost, Austin, Santa, and all those guys. Great stuff. Yeah, I know F1's oh. popular. Thank you, Mick. Yeah. Yeah. See you later. Hey, Have a good weekend, guys. <laughs>